Oh, there, there you are. Hi, Penny. Thanks for meeting me. <laughs> I'm excited for you to find a chocolate frog card. <laughs> I was going to join the hunt, but I got sidetracked by a potions assignment. I guess my only treat will be a good education. <laughs> and there's nothing sweeter than that. How's your search going? Um, on the right track. Marilla thinks the Kleena card is in the Transfiguration classroom. However, Kleena was also a potions expert, so I came here. <laughs> Did you say Kleena? She's one of my heroes! <laughs> You're definitely on the right track. Good instinct. Kleena could brew the Animagus potion, which was notoriously difficult to do. Since I've brewed an Animagus potion, it would be special to find a Kleena card. Well, we technically didn't brew it. Do you think there's a chance the Kleena card could be in this classroom? If it is, I can help you find it. I know what ingredients Kleena used in her potion. A teaspoon of morning dew, one death's head hawk moth chrysalis, one mandrake leaf. And a piece of your own hair, but I doubt there's a chocolate frog card hiding in there. Okay, let's search the potion ingredients for a chocolate frog card. It's not the Death Head's Hawk Moth Chrysalis Jar. Maybe we should check our hair just in case. I wonder why the Mandrake Leaf Jar is empty. That's odd. The Mandrake Leaf Jar is empty. Snake usually stocks plenty of Mandrake Leaves. Why did we? Why didn't we get ingredients from here in the first place? Well, Snape would have noticed. That's why. <laughs> That's why. The recipe calls for a mandrake leaf to soak in your... Yeah, I, I know, Penny. There's no card in the moon dew jar. The only thing in the morning dew jar is dew. Okay, we searched all the Animagus ingredients and even the Moondew jar. Huh? There isn't anything out of ordinary in the Hawk Moth Chrysalis jar or the Morning Dew jar. However, the man leaf, the Mandrake leaf jar is empty. Huh? It's a bit curious. Professor Snape is quite particular about keeping ingredients stocked. Could that be another clue? <laughs> if so, this Mr. Flume bloke is quite clever. But since you're so confident we're on the right track, I say we follow this new clue wherever it leads. We? <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting caught up in the thrill of the hunt. Though we do make a smashing team, Heather, I can see us jo joining forces. You probably wouldn't betray me like Marula did. Ah! I wouldn't do that to you. Actually, I couldn't do that to you. I don't even know how to betray someone. All that sneaking and sleeking and sulking. <laughs> I feel guilty just thinking about it. I know, Penny. You've been quite helpful so far. <laughs> I can be even more helpful. In fact, I know where we can find more mandrake leaves. Uh... There's only one problem. Hmm. They're still attached to a live mandrake. I've heard mandrakes are difficult to deal with. If you're going to investigate, you should do it as a team. <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> Come on, partner. Meet me in the herbology classroom. I'm not sure about these clues we're following, but <laughs> this is weird. Professor Sprout's back there. Is that a card? Penny, you ready to find this chocolate frog card? I think it was sticking out of the pot. <laughs> Ready for anything, Heather, and lucky for you, anything includes finding this chocolate frog card. Do you see any mandrake le mandrakes around? <laughs> there's one right there on the table. It's right. Th there's a card in there. It's right there. I think I see something sticking out of the fence. Huh? Looks like the corner of a chocolate frog card. <laughs> we found it. It really looks buried in there. We'll have to uproot the mandrake. How do you suggest we uproot it? Um. Uh, 
Let's go, let's carefully? <laughs> Brilliant, Mandrake's screams can be fatal and dying doesn't really fit to my plans today. Though this appears to be a young Mandrake, so it might knock us out for a few hours. That probably doesn't fit into your plans either. Her sprout's right there. We could A, ask her for help, B, ask her for some earmuffs. Hmm. We'll need to protect ourselves against his screams, yeah. Perhaps we find something to cover our ears. <laughs> earmuffs. Brilliant, let's ask Professor Sprout. I'm way ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you. Professor Sprout, may we borrow some earmuffs? We need to check that mandrake soil. It appears there's an object in there. This is a dangerous task I could simply do myself. Unless, of course, it's for a worthy cause. <laughs> We're looking for chocolate frog cards! Let's convince you why we... Let's convince you why you should let us borrow the earmuffs. I... <laughs> I don't agree! Chocolate frog cards are a worthy cause. Okay, let me go get energy. We're here on orders of Professor Dumbledore, technically? What? Mandrake could be uncomfortable. That's dumb. We may have different opinions about what qualifies as a worthy cause, yeah? We care about all living things, even deadly living things. If we don't remove it, many more students will come here to try. We know you're busy and we want to help remove the object. That's a better excuse. We're on a scavenger hunt approved by Professor Dumbledore himself. She should know about it? We want to safely retrieve the object in the mandrake soil. The object in the soil could slow the mandrake's growth. Did you help hide the object in the mandrake soil? Probably, I would assume. Yeah. You do make a good point that the mandrake's growth should not be impeded. Ah. And I am rather busy and certainly don't want more students showing up unannounced. Besides, if Professor Dumbledore has sent you, it must be a worthy cause. Ah. <laughs> Very well, you may borrow two pairs of earmuffs. Thank you, Professor. Mm. Thank me yet, be sure to put those on nice and snug. Okay, Heather, let's work together. You remove the mandrake, I'll remove the card. Mm. One, two, three. It was way too easy to put back. <laughs> we did it, that was quite thrilling. We make a brilliant team, and now we have the Kleena Chocolate Frog card. Hope Marula isn't too upset we beat her to it. Yes, but now we have a new problem. There are two of us, but only one card. We both deserve to go to the Endless Confection Feast. <laughs> Perhaps we can talk Ambrosius into helping us out. Look how easily we talked Professor Sprout into giving us the earmuffs. Good thing she's still wearing them. <laughs> I expect you to save a sweet for me. Oh, Of course, Professor Sprout. Okay, Penny, let's present our card to Ambrosius Bloom before Marula finds us and tries to take it. <laughs> I hear he's been seen in the courtyard speaking in riddles. Then let's hurry to the courtyard. Chocolate frog card! Teaming up with Penny and Andre. Oh, has you searching for more chocolate card frogs than expected, but Marula is on your trail. I know, Penny. I know. Come to the courtyard. Meet Flu. If I get into the Endless Sweet Feast, I'll put Mr. Flume's definition of endless to the test. I still don't have a chocolate frog card, but I'm not giving up. That's Rowan. I can't believe I searched the wrong place for the Kleena card. Greetings, intrepid tree trackers. Judging by your jubilation, your confectionery quest is faring well. We found the Kleena chocolate frog card. 
fantabulous, though it did take longer than expected, and that was one of my less complicated clues. Tell me, did you find the clue easy or difficult? I thought it was bonkers, but apparently I think these guys did great. It was easy. With Penny's help, we were able to use your clue to find the card. <laughs> Heather was on the right track. She just needed a nudge in the right direction. Look at you, a couple of confectionery cohorts. And just in time, the trials turn trickier from here on out. Good thing we already found a card to get us into the feast. We? If my maths are correct, there are two of you and only one chocolate frog card. <laughs> That's precisely why we're here. We were wondering, is there anything else you can do to help us find another card? I stated I would only provide clo clues to those who need them. You would require a rational reason to receive another riddle. Let us try to coax you into giving us another clue. How do you find the next card without another clue? And apparently you were out here in the courtyard giving out clues. I don't understand. <laughs> Marula's right there. Oh, look at me. If anyone deserves another clue, it's me. All I need is one more clue. I know I could figure it out. Without a second card, Penny and I will have to decide who goes to the feast. So he's saying, you don't need one. You already have a card. Your clues are the best parts of the scavenger hunt. I'm waiting to hear a rational reason. Penny and I both deserve a chance to go to the feast. She never said we couldn't team up. You never said we couldn't team up. The scavenger hunt could go on forever without your help. Heather and I worked so hard to get the first card. You can make the clues difficult as you like. Heather can figure it out. <laughs> I suppose it is challenging to find chocolate frog cards without any hints. Penny and I both deserve to attend the feast, but we want to play within the rules. We need another clue so we don't have to decide which one of us goes to the feast. Your reasons are based in friendship and sharing. I judge these to be joyful justifications. <laughs> Though I will warn you, the next clue will be quite complicated. Finding the first card was easy. If we work together, there's a good chance we can find another. Very well. What you seek could be hidden up your sleeve. Thank you, Mr. Flume. If you're successful a second time, I will be curious to see the card. I'll be here in the courtyard. Okay, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> so I only lead, so let's see where it uh, leads. The clue mentioned a sleeve. That seems important. A sleeve is part of a robe or a shirt. And I'm afraid I don't know much about fashion. <laughs> fashion, brilliant. We just need to talk to a fashion expert. And I happen to know someone with an exquisite sense of style. I believe he's at the training grounds right now. Then let's go meet him before someone else figures out the clue. Okay. Let's go to the training grounds. Alright, let's see if we can get some help with Mr. Flume's clue. <laughs> Hi, Andre. This is my friend, Heather. Huh. Friend of Penny's is a friend of mine. Nice to meet you. Hmm? I'm assuming you aren't here to watch me train. We're searching for a chocolate frog card. Uh. I heard you got the Kleena chocolate frog card. Uh. Mr. Flume has been proper stinky with clues, so I've come up empty-handed so far. There's still plenty of chocolate frog cards left. Huh. I hope so. I've been dreaming of chocolate wands and jelly slugs all day. If I made it to that feast, I would eat until my pants didn't fit. The feast will have so many types of sweets. Do you prefer sweet or sour candy? I prefer sour. You strike me as an adventurous treat eater. 
I hear Honeydukes is acid pops, a treat so sour it burns a hole in your tongue. If we spend all day standing around talking about candy, we'll never get to eat any of it. Perhaps we can help each other, Andre. <laughs> you might be the key to finding the next card. We received a clue from Ambrovi Ambrosius F and realized it might be Flume, and we're having trouble understanding it. The best we can guess is that it concerns fashion. So we've come for help from one of our most stylish friends. Well, if it's fashion related, you've come to the right place. Ha! The only thing more unparalleled than my style is my style knowledge. Ha! Give me the clue. The clue is what you seek could be hidden up your sleeve. Hmm? I can see why you came to me, however, I can't solve it on my own. Ha! I need the help of some expert scavenger hunters. Let's work together to decipher the clue. Is there a chance the clue isn't related to fashion? I wonder if the word seek is important. We have to think outside the box. Since this is a harder clue, the answer may not be so obvious. Are there any famous sleeves in the fashion world? Don't have time to search through all the robes in Hogwarts. Having something up your sleeve could also mean hiding something. Alright. We will have to come back, but... In the meantime, I finally got 40 red books that we need to adopt this fairy. Oh, I only needed 30. <laughs> For some reason, I thought I needed 40. All right, it's fine. Could have done it earlier. Whatever. He's very unhappy. We will bond with you. Very, it, it, it is fierce. And I will feed you. Likes the food at least. Alright. We adopted the fairy. You got a fairy? Great! Bring it to the Care of Magical Creatures classroom. Oh. You need help and Andre finish the clue first. Okay. We will do that first. Mr. Flume did say seek, which also makes me think of Quidditch, but what would that be up your sleeve? My mind keeps going back to the Quidditch pitch. Perhaps the clue itself is a trick. Boom! Even though Mr. Flume's clue mentions a sleeve, I don't believe it has to do with fashion. Uh -huh. However, hearing the word seek has me thinking about Quidditch. And since you said Mr. Flume's clues are getting harder, we may have to think outside the box. <laughs> Perhaps the clue itself is a trick. What kind of trick involving a sleeve could be related to Quidditch? Hmm? Trick sleeve Quidditch. Uh -huh. I've got it! Uh -huh. That Mr. Flume is tricky indeed. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm excited and you're excited. Andre, do you understand the clue? Huh. It's possible. If I'm right, we'll have a chocolate frog card in no time. No time to explain. Since everyone has the same clue, they could figure it out as well. Huh. Hurry, meet me on the Quidditch pitch. Ugh. Okay, I gotta wait. Which is totally fine. Because now... We can check out this fairy. No, wait. Wait, no, not here? Aha! Okay, it's over here. Oh! Oh, the fairy came with us. Hagrid, I have no energy, by the way. Heather, I see you brought a fairy. Just like I promised. I've been feeding and taking care of it. <laughs> nice to meet you, fairy. 
buzz. It's not very friendly right now. No. Seems fairy's not my biggest fan. That's perfect. Huh? It is? Wouldn't it be better if the fairies like and trusted me? Think about it, Hagrid. If you can figure out how to convince a fairy to listen to you now, you should have no problem persuading the fairies in your garden to move. Aha! Then I can relocate them before Professor Snape can find them. Exactly. Mm. So where should we start? You're the creature expert, Hagrid. I should be asking you that question. Ah. To be honest, I haven't got much experience working firsthand with fairies. I know they're vain. They're always primping and preening. But I'm not sure how that helps us. Ah. That's why I was hoping you'd have an idea how to win over a fairy. <sighs> Flatter it? You should try and bond with fairy by flattering it. Then it'll be more likely to listen to you. Aha! Good idea. Fairies are vain creatures, after all. Go on then, Hagrid. See if you can get it to come around to you with flattery. Ah. Your wings are looking quite nice today, fairy. Buzz? Mm. In fact, you must be the prettiest fairy I've ever seen. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Aha! It worked! Fairies really warmed up to me. Brilliant! Now we know flattery is the way to go. With a little polish, I bet we could perfect a way to persuade fairies. So what do I need to do here? Okay. Thanks for watching till the end of the video. Consider giving a like or leaving a comment. The YouTube algorithm favors engagement, so doing one or both of those things really helps the channel. There's social media links in the description and a link to my tip jar if you're interested in helping out that way. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the next one.